let's do a little cleanup before we start. I'm going to close files from the previous lesson, close the directory here, and we'll change over to lesson 04 in our terminal. So we'll do a cd dot dot slash lesson dash 04. Okay, and take a look inside there. You'll see the markdown file with the step-by-step -step instructions. You'll see a code.txt file with the additional code we'll be using and also a solution directory. So that is here. Now in VS Code, another way to do this is to right click on the directory that you're working in and select open in integrated terminal. And that'll open the terminal to that directory automatically. But I like to show both uh, just in case people that are watching this are working strictly in the terminal. And it's good to have terminal skills anyhow. Ship this over. Now the only terminal I'm working in right now is this one with the green light bulb. That's basically it for now. So let's go ahead and take a look at the step-by-step -step files. And we'll do an open preview for that. And hide the terminal for the time being. And so this is your lab. Once again, we're going to create infrastructure on AWS, but we're going to create security groups with this as well. The first step is to write the code. So we're going to write the code step by step in a main.tf file. So this time we're going to write our own Terraform block and provider block. Now, if you get lost or you forget some of the block information, you can find it in the main.tf in lesson 03. So let's create that code now. And we're going to go in here and create a new file. So we're going to right click on lesson 04, new file, and we'll call this main.tf. It automatically knows that it is a Terraform file because we have the Terraform extension installed in VS Code. So we'll press enter and that builds the file for us. And we can start typing. So the first block of code I need is the Terraform block. If I type TER, VS Code automatically guesses that I'm trying to create a Terraform block. We see the block icon here, the name Terraform, and it says block over here. And that is because we have the Terraform extension installed. If we didn't have the Terraform extension installed, we would have to type this letter by letter, character by character, line by line. But because we have the Terraform extension installed, it's going to do a whole lot of auto completion for us. So if we press the tab key, that's going to go ahead and build the entire Terraform block. This is one of the reasons I use Visual Studio Code when working with a tool like Terraform. Otherwise, we would have to type all of this, and this will save us at least 10 keystrokes right with one tab key. In addition to that, it places us right inside of that block so we can work with it. So definitely use the Terraform extension. It's going to help you a lot as far as speed goes. So within the Terraform block, we need to know the required providers we're going to use and the required version of Terraform. We'll start with the required providers. And right when I type in RE, it guesses what are you going to put in here, required providers or required version. Actually, we want both, but we'll start with required providers. So I'll just arrow down to that and press the tab key. Done. That sub block is now created. What required provider do we need? We need AWS. That's what we're working with once again. So we'll type in AWS equals, and we'll create a new sub block inside of there. This, at this point, the Terraform extension doesn't know exactly what we're doing, so we have to type in the info. I'll press the Enter key to spread out those curly braces, and we need the source for the provider plugin and the version we want to use. So it's going to be source equals, and in double quotes, HashiCorp slash AWS, close double quotes, new line, and version equals. And you'll notice it was trying to auto-populate those as well. A lot of times I'll just type through those. But in double quotes, we're going to do a tilde, like we did before, greater than 
and the version. Previously, I think we did something like 4.16, but when we did the install of the plugin, I believe it installed 4.66. So let's say something higher. Let's do something like 4.50. Now remember, this tilde means that it will install 4.50 or any minor release higher than that. So it can go as high as 4.99, but it will not go to the next major release. And there we go. That's our AWS subblock with arguments. Now we're going to go down to the purple curly brace here and press Enter to add in another line. I like to add another space, but at this point we're going to put in the required version. And again, VS Code, because of the Terraform extension, knows what we might put in here, and required version is indeed it. And it automatically puts in the equal sign, the double quotes, and puts in value. Value is highlighted, so if we start typing, it'll blank that out. So our value is going to be greater than or equal to 1 point, I will say 1.4.0 because I believe we installed 1.4.6. All right, so that is our Terraform block. That is done. So that's how you can code a Terraform block in VS Code. And as you start working more with VS Code, with the Terraform extension, you'll find that you can work with this very quickly. Could you cut and paste this stuff? Yes, definitely. But I want you to get in the habit of practicing with the code in VS Code and working with the Terraform blocks. So we need another block. So I'm going to press Enter twice. And we're going to create the provider block. Again, VS Code guesses what we need. It has it highlighted there, so I'm going to press the Tab key, and it builds a provider block for us automatically. It also guesses AWS, so I'll press the Tab key for that. It doesn't really add much for us, so quite often I'll just type that in. And we'll arrow down, and we'll say what configurations we need. The only config I'm interested in here is the region that we're using. Region equals, and double quotes, US-East-2. Now, in reality, I don't necessarily need this because I've put this into my config when I set up AWS as a CLI within this virtual machine. So do I need this? No, but good habit to do for now so that as you're working later and we work with other regions and other providers, you know to put in configuration information. So this is just good practice at this point. Okay, so there we go. We've got our Terraform block and our provider block. We'll save it with a control S and it's looking nice. There's no red, so this code should work. All right, the next step is to copy and paste the code for the resource that we're going to be using and the security groups from the file named code.txt. It can be placed right after the provider block. It doesn't really matter exactly where you put all this. And you'll see that as we move on, quite often I'll put all the Terraform block information in its own file called terraform.tf. And provider configuration information, I'll put in its own file, provider.tf. But you can have them in any order. Terraf and in any files that you want. Terraform will look at all the code and then decide what it will parse out in what order, in what sequence. But for now, let's open up code.txt and take a look here. What do we have? We have a resource. It's another AWS instance, but it's a little bit modified. We also have security groups. So I want to take all of this. I'm going to do a control A to select all, control C to copy, jump back to main.tf, and control V to paste that in. OK, so let's review. We have our Terraform block and provider block that we just typed. In addition to that, we have the information that we cut and paste in there versus the resource block. Just like the last lesson, it's AWS underscore instance. So we're building a virtual machine on AWS. 
And this time we're calling it lesson underscore zero four. So new lesson, new name. The Amazon machine image we're using, once again, is that Debian image. Now keep in mind, this image is based on the region US East 2. If you decide to use a different region, you'll need to find an AMI that is free tier compatible that works on that region because there's different AMIs stored in each region. So this one is designed for US East 2. Once again, I recommend you follow along with me and use the region that I'm using. This way it'll be a little easier for you. Instance type, T2 micro, that's free tier, compatible. But then we have something new here. We have arguments for VPC security group IDs. So the security group IDs are referring to security group resources that we have below. So we'll return to this in just a moment. We have two security groups, two resources. Here's the first one. It's AWS underscore security underscore group. That is the naming convention that AWS uses for security groups. This one I'm calling SG, short for security group, underscore SSH. So that'll be the Terraform name. And what is happening here? We have ingress and egress. Ingress essentially means inbound. Egress means outbound. So what this server can do. So for ingress, we have CIDR blocks, and it just shows all zeros. That means all networks, essentially. And then we have a port number here, 22. That is the default port for SSH. So essentially what we're doing is we're opening up the availability to connect to this virtual machine from all networks using port 22 inbound. As far as egress is concerned, outbound, it's all networks, and we have protocol negative one. And essentially what that means is this system can connect out to anything. You may modify that and make things more secure as time goes on, but for now we'll leave that as the egress setup. But it's the ingress setup that I'm more concerned with, with the CIDR blocks, all networks, Protocols TCP because SSH has to ride on TCP. It uses transmission control protocol on the transport layer of the OSI model. So it has to be guaranteed connection oriented transmission of data. And it's using port 22 by default. We could use a different port if we wanted to, but that's the default for SSH. All right, so that's our SSH security group. It's allowing inbound access to the server via SSH. Then we have a second one. This one is called AWS Security Group as well, but this one I'm giving a different name. And so you can use this naming convention within the AWS API as many times as you want, but you have to name it differently for each one. In this case, I'm saying SG for Security Group and calling it HTTPS. This time, on the ingress side, on the inbound side, we're only working with this particular network, an internal local area network. And the port that we're allowing, 443. That is the default port for HTTPS. Once again, that's a TCP port. Egress is the same, outbound is the same, it can connect to whatever it needs to. Okay, so these are our two security groups. This gets pretty in depth and it gets into network design and security. For now, we're gonna leave it as this. But keep in mind, we have two security groups that we have set up here. Now let's go back to our instance, our AWS underscore instance. Now what I'm doing here is I'm referring to those security groups. And we do that by stating the argument VPC underscore security underscore group underscore IDs. And then within square brackets, we name the security groups. Well, this one down here is called AWS underscore security group underscore group. And the Terraform name is SG underscore SSH. 
So together, they're known as AWS underscore security underscore group dot SG underscore SSH. And then you put dot ID on the end. This is an identifier for each of those. So we need dot ID on the end here. And that's it. So we can refer to those two security groups and have this instance utilize those two security groups. And this way we could have other instances work with those security groups as well. If we had separate systems that we're building, they could work with those security groups as well because they are separated here. And quite often I'd have these security groups in a separate Terraform file. Right now, we're doing everything in a single Terraform file in main.tf, but later it makes more sense to break them up and categorize them and have separate files to make it a little bit more easy to view them and to sort them. Okay, so that's it. That is our setup. We coded our Terraform block and our provider block, and we pasted in three resources. The first is the AWS instance, the virtual machine that we'll be building, and the other two are the AWS security groups, one for SSH and one for HTTPS.